what's up guys and welcome back to software and audio solutions and today i'm going to talk about a common topic which is call of duty warzone fps loss now it's not just call of duty that people are getting fps loss it's in a lot of other games that's not properly optimized now today i'm going to go over nvidia settings that you can change for nvidia if you're a nvidia user but if you're an amd user stay tuned because i got a very very important note on you guys so if you're an amd user stay tuned I need to speak to you guys as well, so you can know about this. All right, so I did a lot of research on these things, so don't worry, it's safe, and just hear me out. All right, so the first thing I kind of want to do is go to my YouTube channel over here, just click over here, no, not here, click here, go to my channel, and just pause this video, and thanks to everyone out there that's subscribing to my YouTube channel. It really means a lot to me, it honestly does. Everyone that's watching my videos, that's liking my videos, that is leaving comments down below, then I'm getting feedback from you guys saying that, yo dude, this is working perfectly fine, thank you for fixing my war zone, and stuff like that. I really do appreciate you people, because it means a lot to me. Now, thanks to everyone out there that's subscribing to my YouTube channel and letting my YouTube channel actually grow because I wanted to gr grow as a community and help people out with gameplay. As you can see, my stuff is all about gameplay experience and how to boost stuff. And it's all about just games in general and Windows and stuff like that. That's why I'm called Hardware and Software Solutions. All right. So thanks to everyone out there that is watching my videos and subscribing to my YouTube because it means a lot to me. There's a lot of people that's watching my YouTube videos that's not subscribing, but I'm not gonna moan about it. I'm not gonna be like, oh my God, why are you not subscribing? <laughs> Anyways, guys, let's get straight to the point. Here we go. So if you've never heard of MSI Afterburner, I highly recommend downloading MSI Afterburner if you are on a video user. All right, if you've never heard of this program, go and download it. I'll leave a link in the description down below of MSI Afterburner, and I'll leave a link in the description down below of a program called Combustor. You're going to need both these programs to be able to do what I'm going to do today to get more frames out of Warzone and just in general out of every other game that you are playing. All right, so I'm going to minimize out of this and show you guys what I'm talking about. All right, so I'm going to open up my MSI Afterburner, and this is my MSI Afterburner. Now, yours is most likely going to look like this. It's going to be like stock settings. It's going to most likely look like this. But it won't look exactly like this because there's a newer version of MSI Afterburner out right now, and I'm going to leave a link in the description down below of it. Now, I do not like the new version of it. It's like me going over from Windows 10 to Windows 11. Now, it's like muscle memory, basically. Now, I like this one. Now, I don't know if you can do it, but I'm very sure that you can go and download the latest version and just change the theme of the latest version to this theme and you'll have the exact same theme as me because there's a lot of themes for this program where you can make it green, red, gray, white, it doesn't matter. You can just change it however you want to, it's your own personal preference. If you're on the newer version, all you can do is do the same tweaks that I'm going to do today. All right, so Combustor is a very, very um, important program to download and install. Once you install MSI Afterburner in your brand new installer, right? Your brand new computer user. Let's just say you just bought yourself a gaming PC or you bought yourself a gaming laptop. I highly recommend installing MSI Afterburner and it's going to ask you to install a program called River Tuner. All right, I don't know why it's not. There we go. River Tuner. Tick on it and make sure you install it as well after you installed MSI Afterburner because I'm going to get to that point just now. All right. Number one is going to be this. Yours is most likely going to be locked where it says power limit and temp limit. Okay, it's going to be locked. If you want to move this, because I'm going to show you why you need to move this, you just go to this little key icon over here, tick these four boxes over here, and tick where it says start minimize and start with Windows. All right, say apply, say okay, and it's going to ask you to restart MSI Afterburner. Once it's restarted, this is going to be unlocked for you. Because when this is down here, and it shows 65 degrees, right? And then your power limit is on 73, okay? When your graphics card hits 65 degrees, you are going to get FPS loss, meaning your graphics card is going to start throttling when it hits 65 degrees. And I know a lot of people out there hits that 65 degrees on their graphics card. So I highly recommend pulling your power limit all the way to the end and let your graphics card be at 87. So when your graphics card hits 87 degrees, then it will only start throttling. Throttling means when your graphic card gets too hot, you start losing FPS. So I highly recommend putting this on 87 because your graphics card will most likely not hit 87 degrees. And that's only when your graphics card will start throttling itself. All right. So don't worry. There is another thing you can do to basically bring your graphics cards temperatures down if you see this over here where it says fan speed all you need to do is tick on this box yours might most likely say auto just click on it and unhighlight it and then all you need to do is move it to about let's say 85 degrees 
or let's say 90 or 100. It's your own personal preference. Now I keep mine on about 90%. So let's just put it on 90 and keep it on 90% and save it. To, to save it, all you need to do is tick on this little box, go to the little save thing. These things are going to flash and you tick on one, two, three, four, or five and save it on your own profile. Now, before I'm going to do that, I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about because I'm going to talk about doing overclocking. All right, so I've got a NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2060 OC gigabyte version. Yes, it's not the best version out there because MSI itself is a way better cooling solution and ROG Strix is a way better cooling solution. But unfortunately, I had a steel deal on my gigabyte version of my graphics card. So I'm pretty fine with my graphics card that I have. All right, so let's start doing some overclocking. All right, okay, so... Let's just say you have the exact same graphics card as me and you got a NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2060 OC gigabyte version like me, you will be able to most likely overclock more than me or less than me because it's all about the silicon lottery. And what the silicon lottery means is the chip inside your graphics card could either be really, really good to be overclocked much more or it could be really, really bad and it can't be overclocked much more than what it could. Okay, so I'm gonna get to that right now. Okay, so let's start overclocking. So I highly recommend doing your core clock changing your core clock from let's say zero to about let's say 50 okay let's hit 50 so you can do this with your keyboard all right so just the right key and just do it to 50 or you can move it yourself just like this all right so let's just hit that 50 mark all right and do an overclock of 50 okay just click on the tick and then you open up combustor all right so my stable overclock on my graphics card i saved it over here which is one and i click on the tick now my fan, as you can see, it's doing 90% of my fan speed, all right? And as you can see, I'm doing 35 degrees. Okay, so I'm going to open up Combustor, which is the stress test program. Move it to the side. Let me just minimize out of this. Move it to the side. Don't worry, this is a very, very safe program to use. So don't worry about any blue screen errors or your PC crashing or your PC exploding or your PC just lifting out and walking out your door. Don't worry about it. This program is absolutely fine and it's perfectly fine to use. All right, so if you are a 720p user, like a display or a monitor, use these preference. All right, so if you're a 1080p user, like most of you will be, go to full screen mode and say run stress test. All right, now the stress test is going to start and it's going to look like this. And just click on tessellation times four. I highly recommend clicking on that so you can do the most FPS that you can do. All right, so that's my load, that's my FPS, and that's my temperature, 51 degrees. All right, so I'm gonna close out of this and I'm gonna show you guys something that's pretty cool. So I was doing 51 degrees as you just saw there, right? 51, okay? So I'm going to bring this all the way down, tick on it, and do the same stress test and just show you guys what my temperatures is going to do. All right, so click on tessellation times four. Once you clicked on that, you get the most FPS out of your game, your picture or the stress test program. That's your GPU load, and this is your, your GPU temperature. Now, as you can see, my GPU temperature is going to climb by a lot because my fan curve is put down all the way down. Now, the hotter your GPU gets, the less frames you are going to start doing. You do not want to get less frames. You want to get more frames out of your games. Trust me, you want to get more frames out of your games. So as you can see, it's just going to keep climbing over here. It will just keep climbing. So I highly recommend, I'm just going to minimize this. I highly recommend putting this on either 100% so your fans are really, really loud once you're gaming. Or you could just put it on 90 like me and do a 100 overclock and a 100 overclock. But you could play around with this. I'm just going to show you what happens when you do too much overclock and it crashes. Now, I highly recommend using Combustor because you do not want to run, let's say, start playing a game to test if you're doing more frames and then your game crashes. You want Combustor to crash, not your games. You want Combustor to do the crashing. All right, because this is a stress stress program and basically playing games also stresses or puts stress on your graphics card. All right, so I'm going to do this. Go to Combustor, right? But let me actually do this and show you guys what I'm talking about when it crashes. So this is my stable overclock and I have it saved over here. So let's push this up, All right? Let's do about 150. I'm gonna do 150, tick on it. I'm going to go full screen mode. I'm gonna go 1080p and I'm gonna run the stress test. All right, I'm running the stress test right now and this is how it looks and there it crashes. It immediately crashes because, it immediately crashes because this is the problem. You've done a little bit too much on your overclocking. Now, if there was a small little hiccup, Maybe when I was talking, it was my OBS saying that the rendering isn't doing something well. It's because I just basically overclocked my graphics card too much. And that's why that stutter happened. 
All right, so now you just bring it down. Start bringing it down by a little bit, let's say 30. 30 still doesn't work for me. So I have to keep mine on 100. So I'm gonna keep mine on 100 like this and then save it and run the stress test again. Open up the stress test, minimize out of this website, go over here and then go to the same thing where it says 1080p, full screen and say run. Now it's going to start running my stress test again and then I click on tessellation times four and I just leave it. And as you can see, my, my GPU temperature is low. It's really good because I'm doing about 90 on my fan curve. All right, so here's another thing you guys can do. So once you hit your sweet spot on your graphics card to do overclocking, right? Save it. So you just click on this tick. This, let's just say this is your sweet spot, right? You tick, you go to the save and you go save profile one. That's your overclock. Then let's just say when you're not playing games, you want your fan to be a bit softer so you don't really hear it. And you do not want to do any overclocking. So let's just bring this down to zero like that and bring this down to zero. So I'm just going to move this to zero like that. And then I'm going to save this. I'm going to click on save and click on profile two, right? So when I click on profile one, click on the tick, go play my games, get more FPS, GG easy, all right? Go back to MSI Afterburner. When you stop playing your games, just go on the tick two that you save for non-overclock with your fan being low. Tick on it, and there you go. That's when you're not playing games. All right, so I'm going to keep mine on because I'm going to play a game after this. All right, so once you're done with this, I'm going to show you a cool trick that you can do to see your FPS in game, to see what your GPU temperature is doing, your CPU temperature, your VRAM, and your RAM inside your game. All right, so all you need to do is go to this little gear icon over here, click on it, and go to monitoring. Once you click on monitoring, all you need to do is just copy my settings over here. As you can see, those ones that are ticked, you can just tick them. But it's your own personal preference. You can tick on any other ones that you want to see as well. But I highly recommend using the ones that I have ticked. You can just pause the video and see which ones I have ticked. But a very, very important note is when you tick on this, right? Let's just say I untick it, okay? Then nothing is showing here. You need to tick on it. Then tick on this box where it says show in on-screen display. Make sure, sure it says text. Say apply. Say OK. Now you need to do it with every single one of them to be able to see this. Let me just show you guys. So I'm just going to go to a game. I'm just going to scroll down and go to Scarlet Nexus and just show you guys. It will look like this. It will tell you what DirectX your game is running in. Mine's running in DirectX 11 with this game. My RAM usage, my CPU temperature, my VRAM on my graphics card and my GPU temperature and my GPU load. Now, this is a very, very cool thing to have if you do not want to use, let's say, Steam stuff, like the FPS counter for Steam, or you want to see every single game that you play, you want to see all of these things. Now, all you need to do is do what I just showed you and just go to this over here, go to monitoring and tick the boxes that I have ticked. I'm just going to slow this a bit down so you guys can pause it and just tick the ones that I have ticked and remember, guys, ladies and gentlemen, like I said, after you ticked on one of these boxes, click on this box, make sure it says ticks, say apply, say OK, once you're done with that, and there you go. And now you're going to get more FPS out of your game. It doesn't matter if you're a Warzone player, it doesn't matter if you, whatever game you are playing, this will give you more FPS by a lot. It can increase it by 20 FPS, 30 FPS, 40 FPS, 50 FPS a lot. MSI Afterburner is a really good program to use and I highly recommend using this program. Don't worry, I'm going to leave a link in the description down below of both of the programs I just showed you now, MSI Afterburner and Combustor. Now, thanks guys. I really do appreciate you being here, watching my video. Like if this video helped you out. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are new here and I do really do appreciate everyone out there that subscribes to my YouTube channel that doesn't just watch my YouTube videos. They actually subscribe and they're loyal to my YouTube channel. Now, once I hit that 1,000 thousand subscribers i'm going to give a shout out to every single one of you i'm going to go through all of your names and just shout you out i really do appreciate you guys being here and helping my channel grow because it really does mean a lot to me ladies and gentlemen thanks for being here and peace out